Hey guys, it's Aaron. I'm back with another mini extension extravaganza, I think is what we called it last time. A look at a couple of cool extensions, very useful, very helpful extensions that don't take a full 10 minutes to explain. So these are some of my favorite extensions because they do what they do very well and they don't take a whole lot of work to learn or implement or get rolling. So we're gonna hop in and take a look at three extensions that you should probably go get as soon as the video is over. Let's hop in right now. Okay, to show the first one, I have this weird tower thing. I'm gonna say this is like a sci-fi power tower thing. <laughs> so the first extension I wanna look at is Curic Mirror. If you guys have followed live streams or some of my other modeling videos, you know I do like this extension a lot. I've never really put into a video before. Uh, an extension inspection video. The way this works is very easy. So if I have this tower and I want to make a copy of it next to itself, uh, the way I would go about it generally is to make a copy of it, copy it over here, and then either use scale or flip along to put it to the other side and then move it back to right here. So not a bad process, takes a couple of clicks, but with Curic Mirror I can do it all in one click. So select the geometry I want to mirror, Click on the Curic Mirror icon and you'll get this little plane attached to your cursor. Now, any surface you move over, it's going to use that as a surface of reflection. See that there as I move around? So what I would want to do, of course, is move it right to this side. So if I click right now, all it's going to do is flip that geometry. Not a bad thing, but that's not exactly what I wanted. If I look down in the lower right corner, as you would expect, I have modifier keys. So I can actually hold on the option key and click and it's placed. Now the nice thing, another thing I really like about this is I'm still in Curic Mirror and I still have that geometry attached to my cursor. So I could come through and just continue placing pieces that I want to mirror. If I want to do something crazy, I could actually use the surfaces of this cone right here and mirror along there. So any surface is a opportunity to make this copy. So really cool, awesome extension. Uh, definitely worth getting, especially if you do any kind of geometry that's symmetrical, model one half and copy it over. All right, so the next one, I'm gonna make a couple copies here. All right, there we go. All right, this extension is super simple. It's called draw wire. I don't know if you have ever had to draw a drooping wire like power cable or just a wire going between two points or a rope or something like that. Uh, it's not a difficult process, but I had no idea it could be as simple as two clicks. So what draw wire lets me do is just that. I can click from one point to the next and it just draws a looping wire between the two points. Super, super simple. Now again, this is something I can do with native tools. I can turn on my arc. I can click to my first point. I can click to my second point. I can hit my vertical constraint key, the, the up arrow on my keyboard, and then I can pick where I want that to droop to and click there. So not terrible, it's four clicks, and that's assuming that I don't have a whole lot of geometry in the way. If I was in a situation like this, where I have a whole bunch of geometry, even constrained to vertical, I'm gonna be clicking around and jumping to all these points in the background, it can be a little cumbersome. The nice thing about draw wire is it doesn't care about any of those points, it literally just puts that loop in. Super simple. If you ever have to do anything like power cables or anything like that, it is kind of, it'll fall into the must have category. All right, so this is kind of weak. I get it. My, I'm not, uh, my power pole is basic at best. I really just wanted some points to, to loop to, but let's say I want to bring in a better picture, something better to use as a power pole. I happen to have an image that I took myself that I'm going to import. I'm going to come over here, click on import. And I'm going to grab this image right here. And I'm just going to double click to drop it right here. All right, so one of the issues that we can run into with images we import is the crispness of the image. You can see this is a little bit blurry, a little bit blocky here. When SketchUp imports, it resizes to 1,024 pixels. So it doesn't matter how big the image actually is when you first import it, it's going to get resized to that size. So there is an extension. This extension is called Large Image Splitter. 
And what this does is it takes large images like this and it breaks them into pieces that are, in this case, I'll, I'll use 1024, and brings them in at the highest uh, resolution possible. So what I'm gonna do is to make this easy to compare, I'm gonna make a copy of this image and put it over here. And when you use large image splitter, it's actually gonna split all instances of an image as it re-imports it. So I'm gonna take this image right here and I'm going to explode it. This isn't no longer an image now, this is just geometry with uh, a texture on it. I'm gonna take this original image then, I'm gonna use large image splitter, tell it to split it to 1024 and click OK. And there we go. So as it imported that, it made, I mean, this is still a photograph. This is not a, a high res scan or uh, CAD data or anything like that. This is still an image, so it's not gonna be perfectly crisp as, as far as I get in there, but this is the resolution I would see if I open that picture outside of SketchUp. It would look just like this. So if we look over here, here's my original image. You can see it is much blurrier. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take this line, slide it over, and now we can do a side-by-side -side comparison because I'll take this whole image, bring it over here, and we can zoom in. So you can see, look at the difference in crispness between the split image, which is brought in at the maximum resolution, and the original image, which was scaled down to 1024 on import. So if you do a lot of large image importing, anything that's over 1024, you gotta check out Large Image Splitter. It's gonna give you the full resolution of that image you're importing and uh, make this look a lot better. So there you go. Three extensions that you could probably go get. I'll, they'll be links down in the description. You can go grab them today and start using them right away. There's almost no learning curve. Super simple to get in there. And if it's something you need, uh, it's gonna save you time and energy. So it's, it's worth getting. I hope you like that. If so, go ahead and click like down below. If you haven't already, please click on subscribe. We do a couple videos a week around here and a bunch of live streams. You'll be notified of all of those if you subscribe to us on YouTube. Most importantly, please leave a comment down below. At this point, almost all of our content comes from requests from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.